it's going to be quite close. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, we've got a full tuck sighting. We have a full tuck. Oh, that is a kill to it. I haven't <laughs> even seen that. Who <laughs> will? Hello and welcome to Winging It. So as you could probably tell from that very dramatic intro, I have got some World Cup gameplay here today. So this is my first game from the qualifying groups. So the way this World Cup has been formatted is that we have 160 players split into 16 regional qualifying groups. So each of those groups has either 9, 10 or 11 players in. And it's a single round robin, so you play everyone in your qualifying group once and then depending on the number of people in your group, it's either going to be uh, three or four players going through. So yeah, good opportunities to uh, play some new players, obviously, uh, players from your region. And then of course, with the goal of getting in that top two or three and uh, making sure you can guarantee yourself a place in the next round. So yeah, I am in the UK slash Africa group. So we've got nine players in the group, seven of us from the UK. Uh, and a couple from South Africa as well. So very exciting. Uh, I'm always keen to yeah, get to play some uh, fellow Brits, but uh, also a couple of South Africans, which is very exciting. Uh, we didn't have anyone from Africa in the World Cup last year. So good to get uh, yeah, a new continent ticked off the list, I suppose. So yeah, without further ado, I think that's enough waffling on from me. We could get stuck into the starting hand here. So we're going second. And uh, all in all, I think it's pretty good starting hand. Uh, obviously, the American Red Star kind of stands out, but equally, you know, there's the White Star and the Hummingbird uh, that can also generate food here. So really, food probably not going to be the limiting factor. Uh, I'm more sort of thinking about how I'm going to get access to cards. So um, yeah, the bonus cards as well, pretty, uh, pretty nice picks, both of them. I think Ecologist for me is probably the slightly safer. Uh, you know, normally you can guarantee yourself four points from that and uh, have every shot of getting six. So, yeah, that felt like a relatively straightforward pick to uh, to go for that. And, yeah, you see, I'm kind of looking at the Bitten. Obviously, uh, it's a bit of a risk going with something like the Bitten early because you might not be able to get any use out of it. it just depends if your opponent is going to play a Wetland Bird as well um, to, yeah, actually mean that you can use that power. And then even if you do, you are giving cards away to them. So um, it is a bit of a risk. Uh, to kind of go with that power but um, yeah you see instead I'm kind of looking at this hummingbird and I'm thinking to myself right I know I'm going second but there is that wagtail in the tray uh, and I would really like to be able to grab that if I can uh, obviously having some extra food uh, from the hummingbird as well as a red start just to help get some of those birds down would be really nice and uh, yeah especially if I keep this white start as well for some even more food in the forest um, that could be a real nice option so yeah obviously you know, in this position where you are going second, you are kind of gambling and hoping uh, maybe that your opponent does leave that. But uh, you don't really have any control over that. So, yeah, you'll see that is the decision I went with. In the end, I figured, you know, I can get this red start down at least or maybe the white start on that turn one, start getting some food and uh, get everything else set up. But, yeah, I'm really just kind of hoping and praying I can get the wagtail. Obviously, uh, works pretty well with the Ecologist bonus card as well. So... You know, playing plenty of extra birds. Obviously, I can fill up more columns. I can get more points from the ecologist. So, uh, fortunately, wasn't to be my opponent. They played the Carolina Wren, and yeah, quite sensibly, I think, uh, grabbed that wagtail. You know, in that position, I'd have done the same turn one. Uh, like I said, I'm really just kind of hoping when I'm going second that I can get my hands on it. So, um, yeah, it's a shame, but uh, you know, in my head, I had this plan B of uh, of grabbing the Nutcracker instead. So. Um, not really a bird I have a huge amount of experience with, but uh, you know I think potentially it's quite strong. Uh, obviously, only one food, five points, very nice, and uh, that power letting you cash some extra seeds in your supply on birds in your forest. Uh, especially if I do have some of these other food gaining powers, uh, you know, with the red star and the white star and the hummingbird, then I'm going to have some extra food, and so you know, in theory, I'm going to have some left over. And uh, if I can, you know, tactically make sure I'm grabbing seeds to, to make the most of that, then uh, I think that's a pretty good option. So, yeah, I'm kind of weighing it up. I'm kind of thinking through my head, 
you know, this first turn can be so crucial. Just a little mistake here or there can uh, can definitely cost you. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, right, should I grab it or should I play this hummingbird first so that when I do grab cards, I can at least start getting food. And uh, obviously with the seeds in there, that is an option. So yeah, I do play the hummingbird. Um, kind of what I was thinking was, yeah, if my opponent really wanted that nutcracker, they could have grabbed it. So obviously the wren they played, let's draw two cards. Uh, so the wagtail being one of them, but they did a free choice on that second one and uh, they chose not to take the nutcracker. So yeah, it's a little bit of a gamble, but it's sort of a calculated gamble at this point in that, you know, I can sort of expect that my opponent's probably going to try and start getting maybe another forest bird down or maybe even get their wetland bird down, uh, assuming that they have got one before they start drawing cards. So um, yeah, you see they start going for food, obviously uh, leaving that nutcracker there. So I felt pretty happy. And uh, yeah, now obviously I can lay eggs on the hummingbird and I can think about, uh, you know, drawing the, the nutcracker. And then obviously I have uh, the opportunity to discard an egg, maybe get an extra card as well. So um, yeah, I feel like, you know, it's not the best of starts, uh, this kind of setup that I'm going with. And certainly uh, seeing that my opponent gets a, a real strong bird like that mute swan down, that did have me starting to worry. So um, yeah, straight away, go for the nutcracker there. And uh, you notice I do not get rid of uh, an egg to draw a card. So in my head, I'm thinking, birds with no eggs, end of round, I could maybe get you know three birds in the forest down and get up to those four birds. So I was quite happy to not discard the egg. Obviously, though, if I had discarded the egg, I'd be getting my hands on that raven. So uh, that was a real kind of kick in the teeth. Uh, it's one of those where you think, you know, nine times out of ten there, I discard the egg and I get the extra card. And uh, yeah, just a case of me trying to be clever, maybe trying to sort of plan a little bit too far ahead with the end of round. And uh, obviously, rule 16 comes back to bite me. So that was uh, quite unfortunate. But hey, that's wingspan. You know, <laughs> it happens. And uh, yeah, I just have to deal with the fact that my opponent now has a, a real strong uh, grass and bird there in the raven. They can get that down. And that's kind of their food source sorted. So um, obviously, they grab that and then reveal the yellow throat for me. So. Um, me with my real lack of wetlands options uh, that's not a bad pickup I think you know I've still got um, enough time really to kind of try and get that down in this first round and then obviously you know I know I'm going to be go first in that second round and so it's going to be really crucial to uh, to get that wetland bird down this round so that when I draw cards I can make the most of it but um, yeah you'll notice that I did uh, skip the hummingbird so um, again, that for me is just about thinking about my opponent with the raven. And obviously, you know, they don't have any food at the moment. They don't have any brown powers in the forest. So um, their only way of getting food is going to be very, very slowly um, getting food, maybe one or two at a time in the forest. So, yeah, I don't want to be giving them extra opportunities to try and you know, get extra food, maybe get some re-rolls and, uh, and go for those rodents because that's so crucial for them. You know, if they can get that, obviously, this round... Um, then they can play the Raven at the start of round two. Of course, the World Cup here on the tournament's Discord, we are following uh, the server house rules, which means no Ravens, no Killed It, no Franklin Skull in round one. Uh, you have to wait until round two to play those. So uh, yeah, for them really, this first round, it's just going to be all about uh, trying to sort of set themselves up and uh, get that food ready to play the Raven. And uh, yeah, for me, I can get this Nutcracker down. And then you know, I'm thinking in my head, I've got, Obviously, this worm I can play, the white start. I can then gain some food, hopefully get a worm, and uh, and then play the yellow throat. And yeah, that I think puts me in a pretty good position. So that's what I'm going to do, get the white start down. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's all about getting this wetland bird down in uh, in this first round so that when we come to the start of round two, I can start drawing cards. I can start looking at more cards and uh, yeah, probably not find something as strong as a raven, but you never know. You know, this is really the key in terms of getting that wetland set up as soon as possible. Um, just giving yourself the time and also just the cards to look at. It's uh, it's so crucial, really, to uh, yeah help yourself get what you want and uh, and help build something strong. So my opponent going for their wagtail quite sensibly in, uh, in the wetlands just to sort of increase their own card generation a bit there. But yeah, obviously. Uh, with that meat swan as well, getting some extra tucks is going to be pretty nice. So we're going to go for food, like I said. And uh, yeah, we get a couple of cherries. We get the, obviously the worm from the white start. And sadly, no seeds, so we can't use the nutcracker. But yeah, I think really as soon as I can start looking to uh, get everything set up here with the with the red start and you know, maybe some extra food gaining powers, I think definitely 
that great crested flycatcher in the tray. That was one I had my eye on earlier, but it's just a case of you know not having necessarily enough turns to uh, yeah go through and grab that. But um, I'm still happy kind of with what I've got here. And uh, yeah, it's one of those where when you know you're up against a raven and obviously uh, Musewall as well, real, real strong wetlands, um, you've got your work cut out, but uh, you can only do what you can do and, uh, and try and go from there. So here we go. We are going to get the yellow throat down. Uh, obviously, yeah, like I say, kind of twofold, good for the card drawing, but also uh, it does help with this end of round as well. So um, yeah, real kind of good uh, four points to get in the first round. And uh, I say this time and time again, you know, when you're up against strong birds like a raven, like a kill deer, like a Franklin skull, you've got to try and target points wherever you can get them. And for me, a lot of the time that is going to be through end of round goals. So quite happy with that. Get the four points. We go into round two and we see a bronzed cowbird in the tray, which I'm very, very happy with. Obviously, uh, ordinarily a good bird, I think, uh, particularly with all of this bowl nest space I've got. It's going to work quite nicely there. But uh, yeah, obviously knowing that my opponent's going to be doing so much egg laying once they get their raven down, uh, I can feel pretty set up there. And uh, yeah, obviously we are going to go for cards. We'll go off the top of the deck. We're going to get a bush tip. And uh, already my head is starting to go full tuck because <laughs> we have got a hummingbird. We have now got a bush tip. And of course, uh, this cowbird as well. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. And uh, obviously I can go for the food with the hummingbird. So you'll see... Um, yeah, I've seen my opponent. They are still a little bit short on food, so this was definitely a risk. Um, but for me, it was all about, yeah, just trying to obviously get this food. I'm thinking maybe try and get the, the red start down as a priority, and then I can obviously use that to get some more food, focus on the cowbird and the bush tip. And uh, yeah, really just kind of try and go from there. So um, yeah, probably some of these other birds, this grassland hawk, don't think I'm going to be playing that. Um, definitely in my head, I'm thinking... To, to try and get some sort of wetland slash forest hybrid going on where I can hopefully get lots of tuck cards and then maybe go for some food and get some cash food on this nightcracker as well. So um, yeah, revealing the ring build gull of the tray definitely got me excited as well. Um, I was kind of thinking to myself, should I grab it this turn? But it was one of those where I thought, do you know what? My opponent is probably going to be focusing on trying to get this raven down. Um, I don't think they necessarily are going to focus on going for the gull. So you know, I can just keep doing my thing. Like I said, uh, I'm going to try and get this red start down. So lay some eggs first. And uh, there we go. My opponent does indeed get their raven down that turn. So I could follow that up with this red start. And uh, yeah, I now have the option of getting up to five food uh, from that forest. So, you know, I've got obviously this cowbird, this bush tip. I want to be trying to get those down. So they're going to need a bit of food. Uh, got to kind of do that in time as well for this end of round goal. So the bush tip with the star nest is really going to help out particularly these next two end of round goals. So that's, uh, yeah, something to have in mind as well. But yeah, really at this point, I think it's so crucial in the second round to just get everything set up. You know, really my view on this is first round is all about getting the resources you need and getting yourself access to those resources. And then round two is really just about getting everything down that you want to work with. So for me in this case, like I say, it's about this bush and this cowbird. So go for food quite fortunately uh, do get the couple of seeds I need on the re-roll so um, yeah obviously got the two seeds got one worm and then I'm going to get another one from this white start as well and uh, yeah not going to use the nutcracker this time because I do need the seeds but yeah pretty happy with that I've now like I say got the resources I need I can get these birds down and uh, that's so crucial for me you know it's not about finishing your setup it's about getting things started and really sort of fleshing out what you want to be focusing on and uh, like I said for me in this case it's partly the forest so get the red start down and uh, partly that wetland so I'm going to be looking to get this bush tip down and uh, certainly this cowbird as well with the pink power um, like I say all this bowl nest space and uh, all these times my opponent's going to be laying eggs case in point that turn there uh, I'm really going to be wanting to maximize off that so yeah cowbird goes down straight away um, I don't want to mess about any longer. As soon as I get the food for that, it is, uh, yeah, it's going to go down and uh, really just try and maximize off that. And then obviously, like I said, I can focus on getting the bush tip down next. And then I still have an extra turn so I can look to go for cards and get the eggs on that. So straight away, benefit off the cowbird. Very, very nice indeed. Very happy with that. And then, like I said, follow it up with the bush tip and uh, I can really 
focus on the wetlands and you know i'm getting cards i'm getting eggs i'm getting tuck cards i'm getting food um, that's kind of the real good start to the wetlands engine uh, for me it's just going to be about trying to find some more tucking birds so definitely that ring build goal uh, i've got my eye on that but equally you know i think a chiff chaff would work in this situation you know i've got good card access um, obviously the the yellow throat's not in the ideal position for something like a chiff chaff but i think it could still work but yeah any sort of tuck and draw tuck and lay anything like that would be good so really frustratingly uh, my opponent goes for cards right at the last second and uh, does deny um, that ring build goal for me which was definitely a shame but uh, you know again I only have myself to blame because it was there for the longest time uh, but I really wanted to focus on getting everything else set up instead so um, yeah quite happy I can obviously grab the Cassin's Finch there uh, I think I am going to have plenty of food not just from my own forest but obviously this hummingbird as well uh, so yeah if I can you know maybe look to get that down at some point uh, it does help for the final end of round goal as well so we re-roll we get a seed there uh, very very happy indeed and uh, yeah goes over to my opponent's last turn they've kind of been slowly accumulating food so uh, I am definitely preparing myself here for some sort of ginormous wetland play with uh, you know, lots of uh, fish obviously and rodents in their hand um, not going to be too surprised to see some real big plays coming but um, yeah, that's the power of the raven. You know, you get those two foods every time you lay eggs and uh, and you can pick any food you want. So uh, it doesn't matter if the bird feeder's not cooperating with you. You can just grab whatever you want. So there we go. We go to the end of round and we do get a tie in the end, which I, I was quite surprised at. I was definitely expecting to lose that. But yeah, that explains it. The, uh, the eager into kingfisher double play. Really, really nice for uh, all that egg space, uh, especially with this next end of round. They're going to be very, very happy with that indeed. So... Yeah, we come into the third round and uh, we did have a house finch in the tray and certainly I was expecting that to be gone, uh, but was pleasantly surprised uh, to have it still there. So uh, absolutely, I'm going to be grabbing that. Uh, obviously, I've already got the food for that as well. So that's going to be a, a real nice option to yeah add into this wetlands and uh, just really increase the point production, but also that card cycle and uh, yeah, just help yourself you know, dig through the deck and get what you want. And obviously this tree swallow as well being another prime candidate to be looking to play so yeah like i say really it's just going to be about drawing lots of cards and uh, certainly i can do that with this yellow throat as well so that's a good option to have and then just get some extra food so obviously you know, my opponent with the raven uh, they're not short on food at the moment so definitely uh, i don't have to worry so much about giving away a bit of free food with the hummingbirds and uh, yeah as long as i can you know, maybe get some of the food I need and uh, you know, maybe if I have to do a little overpaying it's uh, it's not going to be the end of the world because uh, I should be okay in that regard but yeah quite happy to uh, obviously get the house finch like I said and uh, it's just going to be all about getting that down and uh, just drawing some more cards so um, that's probably how the rest of this round is going to be playing out for me but uh, yeah we come on to my opponent's next turn and uh, not only do they have the raven uh, but they now have the Franklin's goal, so a uh, very, very dangerous combination for sure to uh, to have in the grasslands. Obviously, you know you lay eggs. You're not only getting those eggs, you're also getting cards, and then you're getting food as well. So um, kind of like my wetlands, where I am able to get all of the kind of resources at once. Uh, that's really the strength of this grasslands that they've got set up. So um, I would say it's a little bit on the late side. Um, you know, normally I think you'd like to see that. Um, set up in that second round like I was saying before that's when you really want to be getting your your engine put together not so much in this round three but it's still a really really dangerous combination and uh, even with the cow bed that I have got obviously that is going to get me plenty of free eggs but yeah it's uh it's all going to be down to the cards they can draw and uh, with something like a Franklin's goal you're going to be seeing a lot of cards so yeah like I said before you know you could only do what you could do um, it's uh, it's so easy in these positions to just sort of mentally throw yourself under the bus and uh, and sort of lose focus and sort of give up on the game. But uh, yeah, I don't like to do that. I, I do get frustrated, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure people who talk to me when I'm playing games will be very aware of that. But uh, yeah, you know, you can only just keep going and uh, and see what you can get. So, like I say, we're going to go for cards, and uh, we get another couple of pink powers. So, I'm definitely. Happy to see both the Gold Knight and the Cuckoo. Um, so definitely, again, you know, it's a little bit on the late side for these, but 
uh, I know my opponent is going to be doing plenty of egg laying, so it's uh, it's definitely a good option for me to have, uh, just to kind of have that counter. And yeah, you know they're going to be trying to lay eggs as much as possible. So if I can really try and capitalize on that, and uh, yeah, benefit from the the free eggs that they're going to be giving me, I'm going to be trying to do that as much as possible. So um, yeah, obviously I kind of need to think carefully about how many times. Do I need to gain food versus just draw cards and get food from the hummingbirds? Uh, that for me is is really a key consideration at this point. But um, yeah, as uh, as long as I can work out a way to try and get these pink powers down as quickly as possible, uh, just to really benefit, then that's uh, certainly my priority. So uh, there we go. We're already still getting some breaks from this cowbird, and uh, yeah, I decide enough messing about. I'm uh, I'm just going to go and grab some food here. So um, yeah quite fortunate to uh to get everything i need there on the reroll. obviously got the the worm and the seed first of all and then we get another worm here and uh, i'm also sort of planning ahead a little bit and thinking you know what other birds could i play that around my hand like i said this cast and finch i picked up before is a good option i did also pick up this little bustard so obviously that's going to be a good one uh for the potentially this end of round but especially that last end of round with the with the white and no power so um yeah i think that's going to be a, a good play just to, to really help um, yeah, score points in the end around, but also it's going to help uh, my ecologist bonus card. So um, definitely kind of got some flexibility here uh, with all this extra food. And uh, yeah, I can just sort of plan out and think to myself, right, what order do I want to be doing things in here? Um, you know, key priority really has to be to get the pink powers down. But uh, I do need to bear in mind this end of round goal to, uh, to try and get as many eggs in the ground nest as possible. So yeah, we come back again to my turn. <laughs> And uh, another free egg from the cowbird. So the more free eggs come through from this cowbird, uh, the more I am thinking to myself, right, I desperately need to get these pink powers down. Um, you know, my opponent with the starling as well, uh, I do expect them to be laying plenty more eggs. And even if they you know, aren't getting necessarily the cards that they want, they can just turn the food uh, from that raven into tuck cards. So they are still going to score points that way. And uh, yeah, definitely I want to be trying to capitalize, like I say, off, uh, off those uh, egg laying activations as much as possible through the use of these pink powers so uh, we're going to get our first one down we're going to go for the cuckoo and uh, yeah like I say plenty of bowl nests so uh, even though both the cuckoo and the cowbirds are both going to lay eggs in the bowl nests uh, that can sometimes be an issue with egg space but yeah I think I've got about 20 egg spaces in uh, in bowl nests so yeah, they could lay eggs for the rest of the game and uh, I'm not going to have to worry at all about running out of space there so I'm very happy to be getting that down and uh, like I say still have the food here um, not just for this golden eye but also for this bustard so I've um, definitely got some options in terms of you know which order I do things in uh, but also you know, the freedom maybe to, to go for cards again and kind of see uh, what other options I get so yeah I think that's always nice when you go into that final round uh, in this sort of position where you're going first and uh, yeah have lots of options in terms of do I want to be playing a bird? Do I want to be drawing cards? Um, certainly, uh, yeah, good to have that flexibility, but here we go, straight away, cookie down. Uh, we're going to start benefiting from those eggs. So a couple of eggs, very, very good. And uh, yeah, like I say, <laughs> as, soon as, uh, as soon as I see that they're continuing to lay eggs, uh, I decide it is worth prioritizing this gold nice. So um, yeah, obviously this is my final turn of the round. So we are going to go into the end of round here. And uh, yeah, my opponent is going to be going second next round, so they're not going to lay eggs straight away. But uh, I think it was still good just to get this down. And uh, yeah, like I say, give myself that ability to uh, to just get three eggs every time they lay eggs. Uh, real, real nice option to have. So here we go. We get absolutely destroyed in the end of round, but we qualify with one egg. That's all that matters. And uh, all in all, I think it's a pretty good tray. Definitely that turtle dove, uh, similar to the bustard. It's going to catch my eye uh, in terms of the end of round goal, but uh, equally, uh, you know, the power on that turtle dove allows me to potentially gain some extra food. So, um, you know, I'm thinking here: if I gain cards, I can gain a seed from the bird feeder and play the turtle dove, and then I can use that power to get one of those seeds back and then immediately play the bustard. And uh, that's going to be so nice. You know, again, like I say, for this end of round goal with the white and no powers. Uh, it's going to be good to get a couple of those down, try and compete a little bit with my opponent. Uh, but not only that, the Ecologist again, 
uh, and a couple of bonus cards as well. So yeah, both the Turtle Dove and the Bustard, they're going to be giving me some bonus cards. And uh, yeah, I think whenever you've got this many birds down, you can always you know fancy yourself to uh, to get some good options from those bonus cards and uh, and score some points. So yeah, we're gonna go for cards. Obviously, get some tuck cards. We're gonna see what we can get. But uh, definitely, that Turtle Dove is going to be one for me to grab. And, uh, and I think that Swift as well, you know, that was more of a denial than anything else. Uh, just because, you know, my opponent, they probably got loads and loads of cards uh, through that Franklin Skull. So, you know, they might be tempted to kind of go for a Tucking Bird, play that, and uh, just tuck everything they've got. But uh, yeah, you know, even if they weren't thinking of that, I'm not even going to just give them the option there. So, um, yeah, quite happy to, to grab that. And uh, on the reroll as well, we do see a couple of seeds. So, plan is definitely forming it's definitely coming together nicely like i say i want to be getting the turtle stuff down use that to get the food play the bustard and uh, i've still got you know a couple of turns spare there so i can think to myself you know, can i maybe go for food maybe play another bird uh maybe just keep going for cars and you know continue to get the the tuck cards and the eggs um like i said before it's just about having that flexibility and uh, and having all of those options available to you so um, I'm not going to mess about, I think, with the food there in the bird feeder. Um, you know, my opponent isn't going to be taking it, but I just want to feel uh, pretty self-assured uh, that I'm going to be able to grab that. So, Turtle Dove is going to go down. Uh, obviously, we're going to try and use the eggs off this bush tit so we don't fill up. We get a really nice pull on the bonus card. Uh, like I said, already had loads and loads of bowl nests uh, just because of the pink powers, trying to get those down and uh, give myself space for those. But uh, yeah, to get Wildlife Gardener, uh, I was pretty happy with that. Now, my plan originally, like I say, was to, to grab the food there uh, with the turtle stuff. But I think what was going through my head was, okay, I could still have a turn here going for food. And then I'm going to give myself enough food to go for the Bustard and the Cassin's Finch. And, uh, you know, obviously part of that is just get as many birds down as possible. Uh, but equally, this end of round goal, I think my opponent is on two white and no power birds. So if I can get three down, uh, I think at worst I'm going to be tying. I really don't see them in a position to, to get two more down. Uh, but potentially even winning that, considering that I didn't have any white and no power birds down at all uh, at the start of this final round, that's quite a turnaround. And uh, yeah, I think it definitely has potential to, to catch your opponent off guard in a position like that. So um, yeah, here we go. Coming to three turns to go. And uh, what you can see is that these pink powers have really put my opponent off leg eggs at all. So. Uh, even with the Franklin's goal, they did go for cards there. So, you know, the Mute Swarm power, letting them get some tuck cards. So they are still scoring points. Uh, but yeah, I think just having all these pig powers uh, really kind of dissuaded them from uh, from going anywhere near their grasslands. And, you know, I can completely understand that. I think it can really be intimidating when you just see all of these pink powers kind of appear almost from nowhere. And uh, yeah, you just have no real way to, to counter those at all. Uh, and it can definitely be a struggle, but... Yeah, like I said, I think for, for me, I'm going to be going for food here. So, um, you know, potentially if I do get some extra seeds, I can still use those on the Nutcracker. So um, that is still going to potentially score some points. But uh, yeah, priority number one is going to be trying to get the food uh, for the Cassin's Finch, but also for uh, this Bustard. So yeah, we're going to start by gaining uh, a couple of seeds and a cherry, obviously, uh, to just sort of you know, guarantee myself the, uh, the possibility of getting those birds down. Then, uh, yeah, we're going to get the reroll on the red start. Hopefully some more seeds. And there we go. We do indeed get one seed on the reroll, uh, which is pretty nice. So, um, yeah, along with that worm from the white start, I kind of work out I've got one seed spare. So um, that nutcracker, when I played it at the start of the game, I had such high hopes. I was expecting to see 10, maybe 20 cached food at the end of the game. Uh, but, you know, this is just how Wingspan is. Uh, you can come up with an amazing plan at the start of the game and uh, a situation has changed and uh, ultimately that never kind of comes to fruition but uh, it was still nice I think uh, just for the sake of that poor nutcracker that I did at least get one seed cashed on it at the end so uh, it wasn't a complete disappointment it uh, it did still serve some kind of purpose and hey you know it helped with the bonus card it helped with some boldness space uh, for the cowbird obviously in the cuckoo so uh, I can't begrudge it entirely it did uh, definitely do its job and uh, yeah, you see my opponent is still going for drawing cards. So definitely, I think they were sort of almost a bit just frazzled from uh, from all these pink powers. And like I said, I really can't blame them. 
it's uh, itself putting indeed to, to have to deal with that but yeah we're gonna get this buster down bird counter very very nice bonus cards uh, so along with the seven points from the wildlife gardener we get another four there from that bonus card so um, yeah super happy with that and then obviously I don't need any more cards uh, I'd rather take a free egg from the busted so um, yeah quite happy with that to uh, to get such a good return off the bonus card like I say just got one more turn left to uh, to play another bird and you know with that bird counter I am sort of looking at the bunting as another option and kind of think to myself right all things weighed up, which of these birds is going to be the better pick? So obviously the, the snow bunting is going to be five points. I'm going to get two from the bonus card, but I'm also going to get two from the ecologist. So minus the two egg cost, it's going to be essentially a seven point play. Um, now the Cassis Finch obviously doesn't help any of the bonus cards. It is going to cost those two eggs. Um, so it's only two points. But if it helps me in the end of round, that's going to be another three points. And uh, yeah, certainly, like I say, with all of these birds i've got down uh, i think i have some real good options for bonus cards so um yeah it's all about in this kind of position do you go for the safe play do you go for the risky play uh, my kind of rule of thumb is that if it's a really really close game i'm going to go for the safe play you know if i feel like i need to guarantee myself those points uh, i am going to take that safe play so uh, yeah we do get i think probably our final dosage of eggs here um three three eggs from my opponent go for eggs which is very nice but yeah, like I say, in my head, I'm just kind of trying to weigh up, think to myself, right, how close is this game really going to be? Uh, if it is going to just be coming down to maybe you know, two or three points either way, I'm probably going to be going for that safe play. Uh, but, you know, if I feel like I'm behind, I'm going to go for that gamble. Uh, but equally, if I feel like I'm comfortably ahead, and uh, even if I whiff a bonus card, it's not going to cost me, then I'm going to take that risk. I'm going to see, do that Hail Mary at the end of the game, and uh, yeah, see if you can get that huge point bomb of a bonus card. So... Um, yeah, in the end, you'll see I do indeed go for the Cassius Finch here. We're going to draw a bonus card and we're going to get the Forester for eight points. So uh, that's the kind of point bomb I'm talking about. Uh, I won't lie, very, very fortunate to uh, to get a bonus card like that. But like I say, when you've got this many birds down, um, you give yourself every option of, uh, of getting the good bonus cards. And yeah, when you play as many bonus card giving birds as this, you are definitely uh, going to get some good ones to look at. So yeah very happy with that and like i say as well uh, that's my third white and no power bird um played in this round to uh, to help the end of round goal as well so a few extra points there thanks to that cassins finch such a such a nice final play there so here we go we do indeed win that final end of round goal very very nice getting those seven points and uh, yeah here we go into the final score so uh, i did feel quite comfortable with this i think just those pink powers, all those free eggs, um, really, really huge. So, um, yeah, even with the girl and the raven, I think my opponent just really struggled to, to defend against those. And like I say, some lucky bonus card pulls, but really a huge total there. Uh, did pretty well on the end of round goals and then a few tuck cards as well at the end. And it is a comfortable win in the end, 101 points to 73. So, um, yeah, I was very, very happy with this game. I won't lie. Uh, you know, it was uh, what felt like a comfortable start. And then obviously revealing the Raven and then seeing the goal come down, uh, you do start worrying quite a bit. But uh, yeah, I was very happy to get that wetland set up. And yeah, certainly you know, 25 points from four bonus cards is absolutely above par. You know, I don't think you'd be expecting to see that many uh, in the majority of games. But, you know, sometimes Lady Luck is going to favour you in some aspects of the game. You take it every day. So good win and uh, a good way to kick off our World Cup qualifying campaign. So uh, do stay tuned, do subscribe to this channel if you want to see more gameplay like this. Uh, I'm going to try and yeah, feature as many of the World Cup games as possible. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.